We begin the Gemara today and have Kuf Chav Beis Amid Beis, two lines from the bottom of the Yamad, Tan Rabbanon. Anu Braise. The Gemara begins there, Anu Braise, which we'll discuss the subject of a Bechayr that gets a double portion, Pishnayim. How do we define that double portion that the Bechayr gets? Tan Rabbanon, we learned in the Braise, the Pasuk says, Lo Seis Loi Pishnayim, that you have to give the Bechayr a double portion in the uh, Yerusha, in the inheritance. What does this mean? So one way of understanding this is, Pishnayim Ke'echad that he gets a double portion based on what one of the brothers is getting. Which means, for example, if there are five brothers that are inheriting this father, so what do you do in order to give one of the brothers a double portion? Instead of dividing the inheritance in five, and then everyone gets one portion, you divide it in six, so now there's an extra portion. And then that Bechayr will get a double portion. So he's getting a double portion, double of what one of the brothers are getting. That's one way to understand it. However, there's another way. You say that you get a double portion like one of the brothers. Maybe we should say as follows. Or maybe perhaps that he gets actually double of the entire inheritance. Which means whenever you're dividing the inheritance between the brothers and there's a Bechayr, so instead of dividing it half and half, let's say if it would be two brothers, you always divide it two thirds and a third. The Bechayr gets two thirds of the entire Nachla, and the rest of the brothers, it could be one more brother, it could be ten more brothers, whatever it is, they're going to get just a third of the inheritance. So the Pishnayim is from the entire inheritance. So, okay, so that's another way of understanding what Pishnayim means. Now, so the Braise here goes on to say that Vidinu, it would be logical to say that when, he, when we say that the Bechay gets double, that he only gets double like one of the brothers. Why is that? Because Chelka Yemechad Vechelka Yemchamisha. He gets a double portion whether he's splitting with one brother or whether he's splitting with five brothers. So machel ka'yemecha, just like if he's splitting with one brother, so then he's getting pishnaim kechad. He's getting only a double portion based on one brother. So av chelkayim chamisha, so I should compare and say that the same would be if he's getting a double portion and he's splitting with five brothers. There, there are five brothers, that is, that we're, we're, we're splitting here and he's getting a double portion. Pishnaim kechad, he should get a double portion based on one brother. Not uh, more than one brother. That's one way to compare and understand this. Bryce goes on to say, but this is still not clear. We can say the opposite. Maybe you should explain it differently, going this way, and say as follows. Compare when he's dividing with one brother and when he's dividing with five brothers. Just like when this Bechayr is dividing with one brother, so he's getting a double portion, but because there's only one brother, what that means is he's getting Pishnayim Bechol Anachasim. He's getting a double portion of the entire inheritance. When it's just one brother, then he is getting two thirds, and the other brother is getting a third. So maybe Af Chelkayim Hey. Maybe I should say that when he's dividing with five brothers, Pishnayim Bechol Anachasim. Maybe I should also say that he's getting two thirds of the entire inheritance, and the the other the other brothers are only going to get uh, uh, one third of the entire inheritance. So therefore, if you if you want to try to uh, uh, come to a conclusion about this uh, doubt or this suffix that we're having here, how you divide the pishnayim al pisvare, you can explain it in both ways. So the Brayse concludes and says, "Tamad loyma." Therefore, we have to learn this from the pasuk, and the pasuk says, "V'hoya biyoyim achilo es bonov." It'll be on the day when a person dies and he inherits to his children. Now, this pasuk is an extra pasuk. In the next pasuk, it already t- talks about the halacha of the yerusha. In this pasuk, it goes on to say that you should give the double portion for the bechayr. And there's a pasuk right afterwards that already says it. It's an extra pasuk. What do we learn from this? "Biyoyim hanchilo es bonov." Hatayra ribsa nachla eitzel achin. The Torah is saying here that there's more inheritance that's coming to the brothers. Meaning even after you give the Bechayr a double portion, the Torah is clarifying, but the brothers should also get a fair amount. And that could only mean if, so the Bible concludes and says, So you shouldn't say like the second way we said before, that the Bechayr is getting two thirds of the whole thing, because then the brothers get much less. Ela Kolosh Narishin. From this pasuk, we understand that you have to say that the double portion the Bechayr gets is like the first way we said, that he only, only gets a double portion based on what one of the brothers would get. That's one raya from the pasuk that it says in Parshish Kiseitse regarding this uh, halacha of the double portion. The Braise goes on to bring other psukim that prove this point. Vaimer, there's a pasuk that says, this is a pasuk in Divrei Ayamim, where it speaks about Reuven. Obnei Reuven Bechayr Yisrael, children of Reuven, which is the Bechayr of Yidin, Kihua Bechayr, he was the firstborn. 
But then, he defiled his father's bread, his bed. So this is the story of after Leah passed away and the bed of Yaakov was placed into the tent of Rachel. And he, and because he, he, uh, he said that, uh, oh, sorry, it was placed into the uh, tent of uh, Bila, Bila, I think. It was placed in the tent of Bila, so he wanted that it should uh, go back. Um, yeah, so uh, he was Mechal Yitzua Yaviv. Nitna, no, sorry, I just, I just said Leah passed away. When, when Rachel passed away, that's what I meant to say. When Rachel passed away, so the bed was placed in the tent of Bila, and he said that uh, my father's bed should be by Bila. He wanted it to be by his mother, Leah. Okay, so then, Nitna B'chayrasa Levnei Yosef Ben Yisrael. The B'chayra was taken away from Reuven, and it was given instead to the children of Yosef, the son of, of Yaakov Avinu, the son of Yisrael. V'loi lehisyaches l'b'chayra. Now, the Pasuk goes on to say that it's not that they are considered to be the Bechayra, it's only for Nachla, only for inheritance, they get a double portion. Okay, that's one Pasuk, so it speaks about the Bechayra, Nitna Bechayra Seit Levnei Yosef. The Pasuk goes on to say, there's another Pasuk in Divrei Yomim, Vaimer, the Pasuk says, Ki Yehuda Gavar Be'echov, Gever Be'echov, I read this one second, Ki Yehuda Gavar Be'echov, Ol Nagid Mimeno, Yehuda is the greatest of his brothers, and he's the king over his brothers, and then, but the Bechayra will be given to Yosef. So as it said in the previous Pasuk, that the Bechayra was taken away from Reuben and it was given to Yosef. Okay, so now the price says, It says by Yosef that he's the Bechayra, and as mentioned before, not Bechayra Bechlal, but Bechayra for inheritance. And it says Bechayra here in the Parsha, where it speaks about the Bechayra that gets the double portion. Ma b'chayra ha'amura li'yosef, just like the b'chayra that it says by Yosef, pishnayim, he got a double portion, but how much of a double portion? Ke'echad, like one of the brothers, and the b'raith will soon prove this. Av b'chayra ha'amura li'yosef, so to the b'chayra that it says in future generations, pishnayim, ke'echad, you get a double portion, only like one of the brothers. Now, where do we see that Yosef got a double portion, only like one of the brothers? Vaimer, because the Pasuk says, Vani nasati l'cho shechem achad alachecho. Yaakov says to Yosef, I give you the city of Shechem, one more portion like your brothers. Which I conquered from the Amirim with my sword and my bow and arrow. That's uh, the simple translation. Now, the Brayse says, what does that mean? Did he... Uh, Conquer it with his with his uh, sword or bow and arrow. Falik farnema. There's another pasuk that says kiloi bekashti yefdach v'chad biloisay shieni that I don't rely on my bow and arrow and my sword is not any help for me. Ella, the meaning of that pasuk is charbi when it says my sword zu tfila that refers to davening and kashti zu bakasha the arrow refers to when a person is requesting something from Hashem. That's how Yaakov Avinu conquered this territory. And therefore, he, we see here in this Pasuk that he's telling Yosef that he gets one more portion more than his brothers. Till here is the Lashon of the Braisa. Okay, so now the Gemara will explain why the Braisa brings these additional Psukim after it brought the first Pasuk, Bnei Reuven, uh, sorry, before that even, Bahaya Vayayim Anchilo Yezbanov, why does it have to bring additional Psukim? Says the Gemara, Mai Vayimer. Why is the Braisa bringing additional Psukim? And says the Gemara, because of Chitayme, if you'll argue and say, hi, the first Pasuk it brings, which is Vahoya Biyay Manchile is one of an extra Pasuk, I could say, <coughs> maybe that Pasuk is not coming to teach me the halacha regarding the double portion of a Bechayr that he only gets like one of the brothers, and therefore there's a lot left over for the other brothers. Maybe it's coming to teach me a different thing. Coming to teach me the din of Rabbi Yechonah ben Breke, which we're going to learn later here in this Patek, that speaks about the fact that a father could decide to give to one of the brothers the full inheritance. It's learned from this Pasik. So maybe this Pasik is already used for something else. So therefore, Tashama, the Braisa says, Come and I'll bring you another Pasik where it says, B'nai Ru'uvein B'chayr Yisrael. That Ru'uvein, which was B'chayr Yisrael, and it goes on to say in that Pasik that uh, the B'chayr was given to Yosef, and Yosef only got one portion. But the Braith doesn't stop with this Pasik because Vikhi Taime Bhaira Mi Bhaira Sai Lai Gamrinam. The term in this Pasik when it speaks about Yasef, it says Bhaira Sai, Nitna Bhaira Sai Livne Yasef. So maybe we can't compare the word Bhaira to the word Bhaira Sai that it says here. So Tashama, therefore the Braith goes on and brings another Pasik, Vaha Bhaira Li Yasef. And here it uses the term Vaha Bhaira. And therefore we could learn to the din of Bhaira, the Lashna Bhaira that it says here. 
And the Brisa brings the Pasuk about Shechem, because of Chit if you'll argue and say, Yosef Gufei, by Yosef himself, that he was the Bechor for the inheritance, and he got a double portion, Mimai de Pishnaim Kechot Haba. How do you know that he got a double portion, which was only like one of the brothers? Maybe he got a double portion against all of Kal Yisrael. Toshana, therefore, brings the Pasuk, Vani Nasati Lecha Shechem, Achad Alachecha. One more portion like your brothers. Therefore, we see that he just gets one more portion like one of the brothers. But on this raya from the last pasuk, Amalei Rav Papa La Abaye, Rav Papa asks Abaye, how do you know that he got one entire portion equivalent to what one of the brothers are getting? Eime dikle ba'alma. When he tells him, I'm giving you from the city of Shechem, maybe it just means there's a palm tree in the city of Shechem that you will get more than your brothers. Who says that he's getting a whole portion that's equivalent to what one of the brothers got? Maybe it's just one palm tree. Amalei, so Abaye answered him, Alecha Amakra, regarding your question, there's something that the Pasuk says that clarifies, because Yaakov says to, to Yosef, Ephraim and Menashe, your two children, Ephraim and Menashe, Keruvein, Vishimo, and Yili, will be like Reuven and Shimon, which means when Eretz Yisrael was divided into the 12 Shvatim, Yosef got a double portion, because his two children, Ephraim and Menashe, each one of them got a portion. So right over here, we clearly see that what was the double portion that Yosef got? One more portion that was equivalent to what the, all the 12 Shvatim got, because his Shevet, Yosef, was divided into two, Ephraim and Menashe. So therefore, this is the source of the fact that the double portion of a Bechayr is not a double portion against the entire Nachla, but it's a double portion that's against uh, one of the brothers, in this case, one of the Shvatim. What did Yaakov see that he took away the double portion from Reuven and he gave it instead to Yosef? So the Gemara asks on this question, you're asking what he saw, the Pasuk clearly says, because he defiled his father's bed, so therefore, therefore Reuven lost his double portion. That's what the Pasuk clearly says. Ella, so the Gemara clarifies, his question was, Maro shenosna Yosef. What did he see that he decided, took it away from Reuven, but why did he decide to give it to Yosef? It's the fact that, 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 that Reuven, the, the, the thing he lost was, yeah. was, was Kahuna and Malchus. Mm-hmm. That's what he lost. Oh, but here we're talking about Bechayr, that's something else. True, that's another meaning, correct. But over here we're talking about the Bechayr that he lost. And it's it was not, given in... what, physical land? Yeah, yeah, the physical territory in Eretz Yisrael and the Yerusha, and that was given to Yosef. So why was it given Davka to Yosef? Okay, so, so he answered and explained as follows, that I'll give you the following parable, what this is compared to. That's raising an orphan in his home. And years later, this orphan became rich. So then the Yosem says, Now let me pay back this Balabas that raised me. So what's the Nimshal? So the Rashbam spells out that the Nimshal over here is very interesting. When Yaakov was in Mitzrayim, so Yosef was the one that was feeding ya- 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 Yaakov and the entire family. So it's like, it's like he's raising a Yosem, meaning the fact that Yosef is the one that's providing for everybody. And then what happens when Yaakov... Uh, Pass, before he passes away, and there's this double portion that he's taking away from Reuben. So Yaakov has available now an extra portion to give to somebody. So it's like this Yasin when he gets older and he has this extra portion, extra money that he wants to now give to the Balabas that provided for him. So now that Yaakov had this extra portion, so who is he going to give it to? To Yasef that uh, provided and that fed him and the entire family in the time when they were in Mitzrayim. That was the reason why he gave it to Yasef. So Amalei. So Rab Chalva says to Rab Shmuel ben Achmeni when he gave him this answer, "Vi lav the chot Reuven." So if not for the fact that Reuven sinned, and there wouldn't be any extra portion that Yaakov would have available to give to Yosef, loy mahani la Yosef loy midah, he wouldn't give anything in return. He wouldn't give Yosef anything for this that he fed him for all the time that he was in Mitzrayim. How can you say that it was only because he had this extra portion? So he decided to give it, like in the story with the Yosem, because he got rich. So he decided he's going to pay back to the to the Balabas. Yaakov uh, would have paid back either way. So there must be a different reason why the Bechayr was given to Yosef. Ella, so therefore he said, Rabbi Yenison, Rabbach, loy kachamar. Rabbi Yenison, which was your teacher, he didn't say like you said. Rather, he said as follows. The reason why Yosef got the double portion when it was taken away from Reuven was because really, who was the one that was supposed to be born first? 
Rachel, which was the wife that Yaakov wanted to marry first, and then she was supposed to give first birth to, to, to Yosef, and he would be the Bukhair. The Chesiv, as we could see from what it says in the Pasuk, Eila, tell this Yaakov Yosef, the son of Yaakov, which was mean, means the first son was supposed to be Yosef. Ella, what happened? Shekadmasa Leia Barachimim. Leia gave birth before Rachel because she davened, because of Rachmanah, she asked from the Ebeshter. And when we take Tzniyas, Shehaisabah by Rachel, but then on the other hand, because of the modesty that Rachel had, Hechzira Kaddish Baruch Allah. The Ebeshter gave her back that her son Yosef got the double portion. So the Gemara explains the story here, what happened. What does it mean that Leah came before her sister and gave birth to Reuven first because of the Rachman? Because she davened for this. Because the Chesib, the Pasuk says, That the eyes of Leah were Rakais. Uh, How do they translate their Rakais? Tender. Tender. Tender and teary because she was crying a lot. Now what does this mean? My Rakais. Does it literally mean it's describing her that she didn't have nice eyes, it was tender? That, that can't be. Efshir b'gnus behemet mei ladibur akosov. The Pasuk, when it speaks about even an impure animal, which is actually in this week's parsha by the impure animals that came into the teva. So it, it doesn't, like, the teva doesn't want to use a, a, a negative expression. Dechsev mena behema ha tahira, u mena behema asher einena tahira. It says einena tahira instead of using the term tmeya. So even regarding an animal, it doesn't want to use an, an, a negative term. Tzadikim, so could you say that when it comes to a tzaddik or a tzaddik, it's like Leah, the Torah is speaking of something negative about her. So Ella, what does it mean when it says, Ene Leah Rakais? Amar Avalazar Avalazar says, Shamat Noiseo Arukais. That she had a long lasting gift that was given to her because she got a Bukhar that, a firstborn, that uh, Reuven, yeah. That, that was the, the matana that she got. There's another pshat here, one second, one, one second, oh, it's coming, one second, there's another pshat. This, this is one pshat. Yeah. Rakais is referring to matnuseo harukais. Now, another pshat here is Rav Omar, or another gears in the Gemara here is Rav Omar. Lo'olam rakais mamish. Liter- it does mean literally that her eyes were tender because she was crying a lot. Mm-hmm. Why is that? But v'loi gnayula. It's not something that's negative about her. Elo shvachula. This is actually a praise for her. Because what happened was, she heard in the fork of the road, people were sitting there in Bnei Adam, people, they were saying, Rivka has two sons, and and two daughters that her brother, Lovan, has. Therefore, people were saying that the older daughter, which is Leah, will get married to the older son of Rivka, which is Esau. And Rachel, the younger daughter, will get married to Yaakov, the younger son. And this is what she heard. She was sitting there and, and asking people. She was sitting in the fork of the road where people were speaking about this. And she asked them, The oldest son of, of my aunt, Rivka, what, what is his actions? What does he do? And they told her, He's a Rasha. He steals from people. Cotton by myself. What does the younger brother do? Ish tam He's a sincere man sitting in the tent and learning Torah all day. So now when she heard this, she was crying until her eyelashes fell out. That's why it says rakais. And behind the chsev, this is also the meaning of the pasuk where it says vayar Hashem kisnu aleya. That the Ebesha saw that Leah was hated. That's a simple translation. So now again, the Gemara asks, what does this mean? My snua. What does this mean that she was hated? Ilay mis snua mamish. Does it mean in the literal sense? How could this be? Efshir, is it possible? Begnus behemet meila dibra kaso. Begnus tzadikim dibra kaso. The Tehidah is speaking about negative about Leah. Elo, rather what this means is, Ra'a kadosh baruchu she snuin ma'asel. The Ebesha saw, ma'asel esel that is. The Ebesha saw that Bifanel, that uh, Leah hates the actions and the lifestyle of Esau, and she doesn't want to marry Esau. And what happened is, The Abishta opened up her womb, and she gave birth to Reuven, even before Rachel gave birth. That's the story with Leah, why Leah gave birth first. That was a Rachman that she asked from the Abishta. Okay, now, what happened then later? Why did Rachel's son, Yosef, get back to Bechayda eventually? What's the modesty or the, the righteousness, the tzitkus that there was in Rachel? Because the Pasuk says as follows, that when Yaakov came to Choron, Yaakov tells Rachel, she's asking, you want to know who he is? And Yaakov says to Rachel, 
that I am the brother of your father. So on this the question is, He's not, uh, why is the Pasuk saying, uh, He's not, uh, is, is, uh, is Lovon, the son of Rivka, that Yaakov could say that I'm your father's brother. He's, the, the, he's only a, a nephew because he's the son of the sister of her father. So why did it say that he's a, the brother of the father? Ella, what was Yaakov saying to Rachel? Oh my law, he was saying to Rachel, Mintzav are you going to marry me? So Amr Alei, in, so Rachel says, yes, I'll marry you. But there's a problem. Miu, however, Abba Ramahu, my father is a, is a, um, a deceiver. And therefore you're not going to be able to convince him that I, that I should uh, marry you. Oh my law, so he said to her, Maira Mose, what's his, what's his deception? Why, why are you afraid that he won't allow me to marry you? Omer Aleh, so Rachel says to Yaakov, Isli Achse, the Kashishim Minoi, I have a sister that's older than me. Vele Mintza Vali Mikama, so he's not going to allow me to marry you before her. Oh my law, so this is why Yaakov said that I'm your father's brother, Achivani Beramos, I'm his brother, and to, 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 I'll now be able to deceive him. Amalei, so uh, so Rachel says to Yaakov, but um, is it allowed for tzaddikim to go and, and act and behave in this way of deception? So Yaakov said, in yes, it's allowed, because the pasuk says, im novar tisbara titapa. That is vim ikish titapa. When you're dealing with someone that's foolish or someone that's deceiving you, so the only way to overcome him is to outsmart him and to deceive him. Okay, so what happened here? So here's a famous story that happened, that when it came to the chasana and Lavan gave uh, Leah to, to come to get married to Yaakov, and Yaakov gave special signs for Rachel that uh, he should not, because he knew that yeah, Lavan wants to do this. But then Rachel saw that Leah will be embarrassed. Masar lo simonim, Yaakov. Oh, one second, the Gemara starts with the story. Masar lo simonim, Yaakov gave special simonim for Rachel. To know that uh, it's his it's his wife that he wanted to marry, but then when Lavan came and brought Leah, that she Leah is going to get married to Yaakov. So Rachel thought to herself, and this is the tzitkus, this is the tznius of Rachel. My sister is going to be embarrassed. She gave over the simonim to Leah. And this is the meaning of the pasuk that it says, "Vayihiba boiker vihine hi Leah." In the morning, Yaakov discovers that it's Leah. McLeod, from this we understand, Adash to love Leah. Till this point, it was not Leah because he thought Yaakov thought that it was Rachel. Elamitech Simonim Shemasal Yaakov the Rachel Masrasal the Leah because of the Simonim that Yaakov gave to Rachel, and then Rachel told him to Leah. Lehava Yadala Ad Ahi Shaita. He didn't know until that point that this is Leah. That's the story of the Tzitkus, or the Tznias, the Gemara refers to it as Tznias, of Rachel, that she got back the Bechayra for her son, Yosef. That's the end of the story, explaining why Yosef, in the end, came the, came the Bechayra. Okay, now the Gemara has another Shaila here, a related subject, speaking about the, the Yidin Dena Mitzrayim with Yaakov. So he asked from Rabchia Barabe, Bechlolon, if you count the Yidin, when they came down to Mitzrayim, so what does it say? What was the number of Yidin? It says in the Pesach that there were 70 that came down to Mitzrayim. But if you're going to count the actual names and the number of people that came down, you'll see that it's actually 69. So where is this? Who's the 70th? There was a twin that was born together with Dina and that was the 70th. Yeah. Why? Because the Pesach says, V'es Dina Bitoi. When it says, V'es, that means that when Dina was born, there was a twin that was born with her. That's the 70th. So the question on this is, if that's the case, Elamiyata, if so, Tumo Isa and Binyamin. There was a twin that was born together with Binyamin. Because the Chsiv by Binyamin also says, Ves Binyamin Achiv Ben Imoy. So it says, Ve as Binyamin Achiv, the son of his mother. So we, we know that a twin was born with him as well. So how could you say that we're counting the twins as, as part of the 70? It must be that we don't count those twins as part of the 70, just like we don't count by Binyamin. We don't count by Dina either. So what's the number 70 here? So Amari said, I had a precious gem, precious uh, pearl in my hands. And you're trying to make me lose it. 
It's here because this is really the correct pshat to explain why the number is seventy. Hachi Yomer Rab Chama Bar Chanina. Rab Chama Bar Chanina explained Zu Yechavet. The seventieth one refers to Yechavet. Shahirasa Baderach. Her pregnancy was before she came down to Mitzrayim. On the way going down to Mitzrayim, her mother was pregnant with her. Vileidasa and her birth was Bein Achaimis as they entered into Mitzrayim. By the wall entering into Mitzrayim. Shanema, as the Postic says, Asha Yolda is Alevi be Mitzrayim. She was born in Mitzrayim, which means Leidasa be Mitzrayim, Ve'ein Hayrasa be Mitzrayim. She was only born in Mitzrayim, but her pregnancy was not in Mitzrayim. That's the precious gem to explain what the number 70 here is. What's the Pshat in this? Why is it such a precious gem, this Vart, that she was pre- her mother was pregnant with her out of Mitzrayim, but she was born in Mitzrayim? So the Rebbe explains in a Sikha regarding this subject that. This was the birth that brought to the birth of Moshe Rabbeinu, which was Moshe and Shalei Yisrael, that is the Savior that took Eden out of Mitzrayim. So in order for Moshe Rabbeinu to be the one that's going to redeem Eden from Mitzrayim, you have to have both aspects. On one hand, it has to, the pregnancy has to be out of Mitzrayim, meaning he has to be a person that's higher than the Golos. In order to be able to take Eden out of Golos, he has to come from a level, from a place where the Golos is not going to affect him. Because if he's in Golis himself, in Chavish Matar Satsma, he can't take Yidin out of Mitzrayim. On the other hand, though, the birth had to be in Mitzrayim. Because in order to take Yidin out of Mitzrayim, Moshe Rabbeinu has to be able to go down to his brothers, like he said, that Moshe Rabbeinu saw the condition of the Yidin to be able to relate to them in Golis Mitzrayim. So therefore, you have both aspects of the birth of his grandmother, Yecheved, that, um, or Yecheved, sorry, his mother Yecheved, that is, sorry, yeah, his mother Yecheved, and therefore, this is the precious gem of how Moshe Rabbeinu was able to uh, redeem Eden from Mitzrayim. So, Dr. Gemara Vaita, another Shaila, he asked, Boy Menei, Rab Chelboy, Merab Shmuel Banachmeni. Ksev, one postic says, Vayihik Asha Yolda Rachel as Yosef, that when, uh, when Rachel gave birth to Yosef, so then it says, the continuation of the Pesach there says, that Yaakov says to his wife, Rachel, now we have, I want to leave your father, Lavan, I want to go back home. So the question is, why Dafka after Yosef was born, then Yaakov says, okay, I'm ready to leave. So Shmuel ben Achmeni answered him, Ra Yaakov Avinu, Yaakov saw, She'ein zareh shal Esav nimsar, elu yad zareh shal Yosef. That the descendants of Esav, will only be given over into the hands of Yosef. So it's only after Yosef was born that Yaakov feel safe that he can travel back home and he wasn't, didn't feel threatened anymore by his brother Esau. Shanema, this is learned from the Pasuk where it says, V'hoye beis Yaakov eish, the house of Yaakov is like fire. Or beis Yosef lohova, and the Yosef is a flame, flame of fire. Or beis Esau lakash, and Esau, the house of Esau, will be like straw that gets burned very easily in the fire. So you see here that it says it's beis Yosef. That Yosef is like the flame of fire that's going to burn down the house of Yes of of Esau. That's why Yaakov left them. So the one asks and this from what we see later in the war that David and Melech fought against Amalek, which was the descendant of Esau. So Esau, the question is, the pasuk says, "Va'yakem David me'aneshev aderev," and David fought and and uh, killed them from the morning until evening, lemachrosam, and then the next day, and over there in that pasuk. It, it, it was, what do we see there? It's speaking about this was a war that was fought, as we'll see in the Gemara here, in Siklog. And this is when David fought against the Amalekim, the descendants of Esau. And David was not from Yosef. David is from Yehuda. So how can we say that it's the descendants of Yosef that will kill the descendants of Esau? If here it says David. Amalei, so he answered him, the Akrach Nevi'eh, whoever taught you this Pasuk in Navi, layakrach Ksuvi. He didn't learn you, he didn't teach you, that is, the Psukim that it says in Ksuvim. Tchsev, because there's another Pasuk in Divrei Yamim that says the continuation of the story, and there it says that Belechtoi el Tziklog, when they went to Tziklog, Naflu Olav, Mimenashe, Edna, V'yezeved, V'yediel, Umichal, V'yezeved, V'aliu, Tzilsi, so here in this passage, it's clearly saying that these were all the generals from, descendants from Menashe, that they were the ones that fought against Amalek. So yeah, David also was fighting, but the main ones that were able to be victorious in that battle was the generals that came from Shevet Menashe, which were the descendants of Yosef. But Master Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef asked on this, but there's another passage there that goes on and says, In Tivrei Yomim, Umehem, Bnei Shimon, Mim Bnei Shimon, Holchul Har Seir, from the children of Shimon, they went to Har Seir, which was where the descendants of Esav are, Anoshim Chamesh Meis, and who are the descendants of Shimon? Uflatya, Unarya, Rafaya, Vuziel, 
and Bnei Yishi Bereisham. And who was the head of all of them? Was Bnei Yishi. And Vayaku as Shedis Apletola Amalek, and they killed and wiped out the remnants of Amalek, and Vayeshvu Sham At Hayyimazeh. They lived there until today. So it seems to be saying here in the Pasik that who were the ones that fought and, and wiped out Amalek? This was Bnei Shimon that went to Seir to wipe out Amalek. Not, again, the question is not the descendants from Yosef. So the Gemara answers, Amar Abba Bashila, when it says that who was the head of all of them, it says Bnei Yishi was the head of all of them. Yishi me Bnei Menashe Asai. Yishi was not from the children of Shimon. This Yishi was from the descendants of Bnei Menashe. The Chsiv, as it says in another, another Pasuk, or Bnei Menashe, who are the children of Menashe? Chaifer the Yishi. So therefore, this is the descendants of Yosef that were the ones that wiped out Amalek, like the Gemara brought in the beginning. Okay, so this is the end of the story related to the way it was in Mitzrayim, Yaakov, Yosef. Okay, now the Gemara begins a new subject going back to the story of the Bechayra. Okay, let's turn another piece over here. When you get to the, uh, the double portion of the Bechayra, the Gemara here brings a Braise, different details, halachas about the double portion. Bechayr gets a double portion. Now we're talking here about a Bechayr that his father is a Kayin. And the case here is that the father gets certain gifts as a Kayin, and the son will take a double portion of this. So one of the things is, Bizraya or B'lechayayim or B'keva. Any animal, even of Chulin, when you shecht it, so the Zraya, the forelegs, and the L'chayayim, the jaw bone, the jaw meat, and the keva from, from the intestines, that has to be given away to a Kayin. So now the, the uh, son of this Kayin, that his father gets this, gets a double portion in this. Now, Obimugdashin, and he also gets a double portion from the kachim that his father gets from the karbanis, the portions that the father eats from the kachim that are brought in the Beis Hamikdash. The son that inherits the father gets a double portion in this as well. And the third thing, And also, the father's properties that were improved in their quality after the father passed away, the son, the b'chayr, will also get a double portion in this. But the Braisik now clarifies when is that, Ketzat, when is that the case? The father left after he passed away a cow, which was Mukheres or Muskeres It was leased or rented to someone else. Or a cow that's grazing out in the field. Vialda and it gave birth. So even though this is sort of an improvement, whether by the lease, there's an improvement, there's income that you make from this, or the birth of the cow that comes after the father passes away, the Bukhar takes a double portion. Av or Bonu Batan Vinotu Kromim, if the father had a land, and the, the brothers now went and built houses on this on this land. Or Vinotu Kromim, the father had fields and they planted vineyards on this. And Bukhar Neutal Pishnaim. On this, the Bukhar does not take a double portion. Till here is the Braise. Now, this Braise is based on a point that we already learned a few times before in the Gemara, that the Bukhar that gets a double portion from the father's inheritance only takes from Muchzik what's already in the father's possession when he passed away, not from ro'oi, not from something that potentially comes later. And over here, this Bryce is adding and clarifying that a shvach, a certain type of shvach, a shvach that comes b'derech mamela, the Gemara will clarify soon, this kind of a shvach, this, the, the, the b'chayr, still will get a double portion. Okay, now the Gemara here will explain all the details of this b'raise. It starts with the first halacha. Let's see. It says the Gemara, Hai hazroya v'alachayayim v'akeva. When it speaks over here about the fact that the b'chayr gets a double portion from these parts of the animal that the father, the kayin, gets. Hey, chidami, what are we talking about? If the father already received these portions of this animal in his lifetime, so then pshita, it's obvious, obvious that when the father dies, the son, the, the son gets a double portion of this. Why not? But if the father did not receive this yet when uh, he was alive, so then roihu. So then this is something which potentially he got, he had before. He only, he only came to him afterwards. That someone gave it to the father after he passed away. So then why would the son get a double portion? The rule is, a Bukhari never takes a double portion, with, with, which is something that the father only had a potential to get when he was alive. Answers the Gemara, what is this Baraisa speaking about? Hocha bimakirei kohona askinon. This Baraisa is speaking about a case where you have a Yisrael that has a relationship with a specific kayin. 
and he always gives all of his things that he has to give to a kayan, whether the trumis, maestris, or in this case, the matonis that come from the animal, he always gives it to this yid. And also, this animal was already shechted in the life of the father. And the time of this b'raisa holds, matonis, shaloi hormu, those gifts, whether it's trumis, maestris, or in this case, we're talking about the animal, even before it was separated, it's like it was already separated, and therefore, it's like it was already given as a matana to their father. It's not muroi, it's muhsik, it's like the father got it already. The seed has a mitzvah to give it, and he always gives it to this kain. He was already magnet to this kain, even though he didn't physically give it to him yet. Now, Taisus over here says, and I mean, this concept of matana shloi horma is always brought in the Gemara Zamachloikis regarding trumas and maestris. Before you separate it, is it as if it already was already separated or not? But in this case, Taisva says that because the parts that belong to the kain in the animal is identified, you know exactly which parts belong to the kain. Everybody agrees that even before it's given, it's already it's as if it's given to him. That's Taisva's shit here. Okay, the Gemara goes on now to the next part of the Brai, so Mugdoshin. What did it say? Those parts of the animal by Kochim that the father, the Kayin, receives and eats, the son will get a double, por- double portion from this. But this portion does not belong to him. It's, it's mom and Gavaya, belongs to the Ebishter. The Kayin is able to eat from, from Shulchan Gavaya. That's the Lush that the Gemara uses in many places. But the fact that the father is able to eat from the karbonis, from Shulchan Gavoya, but it doesn't belong to him. He has no ownership over it. Why should his son get a double portion of this? Answers the Gemara, B'kotchim Kalim. We're speaking about the Kotchim Kalim, that a Kayan gets a portion of the meat. And Va'alibet, the Rabbi Yaisi Aglili. It's following Rabbi Yaisi Aglili's opinion. The Omar, Rabbi Yaisi Aglili holds, Momin Bailam Hu. The portions of the meat of a karch, of Kotchim Kalim, let's say a Karb Mishlamim, that the, the Kayan eats, that actually is his money. He has a monetary ownership over it. The, the, the Tanya, we learned in Abraisa where Rabbi Yossi says this, the Pasuk says, Amal, Amal, Bashem. This is a Pasuk where it speaks about a person that swore falsely and he wanted to steal from someone and then he admitted to this. So he has to bring a carbon asham. He has to pay a fifth for that. So the Pasuk there uses the term, Amal, Amal, Bashem. Why is he using this term that he's a me'ila in the Eibishter? The rab is kachim kalim. It's coming to say that this applies even in a case of kachim kalim. When you try to steal from someone, his kachim kalim. Shehein, mom and bailim. That's the same like when you try to steal money from someone because that kachim kalim belongs to the kayin. This is Rabbi Yisek Lili's opinion. And that's what the Bray here meant, that the Bukhar gets a double portion in this. Okay, the last case that the Braisa said, if the father left a cow that was leased or rented in someone else's hand, and uh, or this was a cow that was grazing out in the field, and it gave birth, so the Bukhar takes a double portion. So the Gemara asks on this, Hashta muhkeres or muskeres when it's leased or rented by someone else. The lav but it's just the mother did who came. It's not by by the the owner. It's not by the father. Amrit shakel. So you say that nevertheless the bechor takes a double portion. That's even though the the pada is rented and leased out to someone else, and there's an income that you're making from from this uh, cow. Still, this is something that the bechor gets a double portion. Roye <coughs> ba'afar. When it's grazing out in the field, that it's in the father's possession. It's just not in his house. It's in the field, but it's it's in the father's possession. Me boy, yeah. Needless to say, it's obvious that the bechay should take a double portion here. Why did the brayse have to say this? So the gemara answers and explains how And this is what the brayse is saying: muhkeres or muskeres. When the father's cow is leased or rented out to someone, when do you say that the bechay gets a double portion? Dumye the roye ba'afar. That's only if it could be compared, if it's similar to the cow that's grazing in the field. Just like when this cow is grazing out in the field. The improvement with this cow that it gave birth is something that happens memela, that it gave birth. And nobody has to feed it. The, the children here now that are, that are alive, that are inheriting the father, they're not feeding it now and are bringing this new birth, this new shvach. They're not feeding it. It's eating for it's eating itself out in the afar, and it gives birth on its own. Af muhkeres or muskeres. So too, when it comes to this cow that's leased or rented out, shvacha the memele kaasid lechaser The case here is that the brothers are not feeding it now. 
there's no nothing that they are giving to it. It's just uh, an income that's coming automatically from the lease that was already there in the lifetime of the father. And therefore, this is something that the Bukhari gets a double portion for this. That's why the Bryce is saying this. So the Bryce, uh, the Rashbam explains, is comparing to the case where it's grazing out in the field. But on the other hand, it also mentions Mukhkeres and Muskeres, that you shouldn't think that it's only the cow that's grazing in the field. Even when it's leased out to someone else, Still, but because it's an automatic income that already began in the father's lifetime, that continues after he passes away, this is a case where the Bukhar gets a double portion.